why the same premium doesn't mean the same risk. So uh, this is sponsored by the SIBO, of course, uh, and is a follow-up to what we talked about um, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So let's do it. So yesterday we discussed how much premium we receive on average relative to the stock price. So, and we looked at kind of how you can determine that. So we looked at basically uh, premium over the stock price or the stock price over premium, I should say, um, and how much additional premium we receive when we sell in different periods of volatility and how often those occur. Uh, there's the cat again. There we go. Um, and so really what we every home, every home should have a, uh, a, uh... A little bit of uh... Uh, uh, don't don't go there. Don't go there. Um, so yesterday's segment was basically, you know, the, the takeaways and the, the um, thought process there was that, you know, periods of very high volatility don't come very often. You kind of have to have a range of, of volatility in that 30 to 60 IV rank range being kind of the spot to that that's kind of the nirvana spot you don't want volatility too low uh too high you don't want it too low you know you you want it just right so mm -hmm. that 30 to 60 range kind of being the just right range so here we're going to look at uh the difference between a 16 delta strangle and a short put where the same premium is being sold so a lot of questions we get uh, around around premium are like should i sell the same premium option should i look for the 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 same amount on on you know an iron condor in in stock xyz versus another one that's kind of where we're going here with the looking at the premium itself the same amount of premium okie dokie so in the third, so what we're looking at here is in the 30 to 60 day time window, the put that has the same premium as the 16 Delta strangle. Um, and that puts you at roughly the 25 to 30 Delta put. So what that means is if you're looking at just doing one side, so you want to sell the put, you're going to sell about the same amount of premium as you would be selling the one standard deviation strangle in SPY. Um, and so the it makes sense because when you add up the deltas of a 16 delta put 16 delta call you have 30 total deltas there they offset each other because they're on different sides but it makes sense that you'd have kind of a similar amount of value in those in those two options um so the combined credit of the 16 delta put and the 16 delta call is approximately equal to selling this the, a single put at a 25 to 30 delta, that's kind of your premium range where they're equal. Um, so we're going to take a look at those those two um, those two trades here. Okie dokie. Um, do I scoopy scoopy one of those MNQs? Um, this is this is your this is your party. Sold them at 57 and trading around 40. Uh, I just had them at 37. All right, we're going to hold it. Put a in. Um, okay, so SPY, 45 days, and we're doing this from 2020 to 2025. So that's our study. We're looking at the 16 delta strangle, the 25 delta put. So this is roughly the same amount of premium. And we're going to manage these trades at 21 days. We recorded the average PL, the average standard deviation, uh, with uh, standard deviation of risk, our CVAR, and PL for both the strategies. Uh, what do you think is going to work best in this in this time frame? Oh, um, and it's a typical time frame for us, right? We always look at this 45 day uh, time frame, 16. Yeah. No, I mean from 2020 to 2025. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I mean, the one that has the, the the more delta to it is the one that's going to more bullish delta to it is gonna is gonna be the one that works. I would imagine, right? Yeah. Well, it's been a mostly up market, so you know that'll obviously influence it too. But I think we'll I think we'll see kind of a mixed mixed bag here as there as there always is. Next slide here. So splitting the premium between the put and the call actually tightens the risk profile. Obviously, you have, you know, this goes to uh, our, our our guy, AZ, who emails us all the time uh, about one standard deviation representing both sides. So when we say one standard deviation put, we look at it from a delta perspective, but from a probability perspective, if you move it to the 30 delta, 
that actually gives you one. That's the same probability. It's a 70 percent probability of profit. So um, anyway, so looking at these splitting the premium between the put and the call actually tightens the risk profile because you have risk on the upside. Even when premium is the same, the 25 Delta put offers 75% higher median profit. And that's because we've had kind of the data set here of the last five years has been mostly bullish, 8% higher win rate and 22% better profit factor, but at a cost of 34% higher volatility. This should not be a shock to you. When you are only trading on one side of the market, your volatility at any point is going to be way wider because you don't you you don't have those occurrences where uh, you know market goes down and you have value that comes out of your calls. You're you're just on the on the long side here, so um, you know you have that kind of worse tail risk, and that's also because your your put is closer at the money. So you have forty one percent worse tail risk and a fourteen percent larger worst case loss compared to the sixteen delta strangle. So you know you're it's a double edged sword, right? I mean you you're going to make more on the on the moves up. And it has been a upside market. The market has gone up. But when you have those moves to the downside, you're going to also have bigger tail risk. That just comes with being directional versus non-directional. And, and you know, we're just looking at uh, oh, Coinbase. Coinbase, that's correct. You sold you. that for $7, what? 35 minutes ago yeah when we when we did the when we did the segment nice little scalpy scalpy out of you yeah i just put that in at six and didn't think we would get it but um so ultimately like we're looking at one position set and what this should tell you is that you need to diversify not only strategy but directional assumptions across your portfolio because you don't want your whole portfolio to just be short puts you want to have that two-sided trade and and limit some of that tail risk that you have here very good Next. uh even the sps are still up 35 nasdaq uh still up 228 hasn't moved where, where's our spx at oh your spx spread's got to be a debacle let's take a look at that for you no we're right there spx we're we're still out 4, of 430 you're out of buck 430 mm-hmm I figured maybe you get a little bit of a vol crush here. I mean, because you, you got volatility down twenty. Yeah, but you got a defined risk trade. You're 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 in it for the duration now. Yeah. Um, in market downturns, the story becomes even more convincing. We computed the average results for these major downturns, and so we're looking at um, from February to March of 2020. That was kind of the COVID craziness, um, and then from January to October of 2022, and then the major and secondary drawdowns. So, like these are some of the kind of lesser uh, moves to the downside that we had as well throughout this five-year period uh, to kind of look at the at those stats as well. So getting on to the next slide here, um, the difference becomes even more clear in the severe market conditions with similar initial credits. The 25 Delta put delivers a 25 or a 26 percent higher median profit, but it also comes with much more PL volatility of 34 percent more volatility and 34 percent worse tail risk and a 14% larger max loss. So, you know, again, we're cherry picking these stats, but we're showing you that it's not always, you know, roses, right? You sell the puts and it's great, but you have to be able to, and this comes with sizing and managing winning trades and all that good stuff. You have to be able to withstand when things don't go your way. I mean, it has been mostly free money to sell SPX zero day put spreads, but occasionally you're going to take that max loss and you're going to have those those sort of drawdowns. So you can see here, you know, you have much wider um, CVAR and much wider uh, peak to trough P and L when you're just doing one side of the trade. The 16 delta strong strangle, and this has the same amount of premium, holds up far better under stress, posting a four point higher win rate, a 23% stronger profit factor and reduced risk by 25%. That's not a shock because you're selling uh, some short delta and we're looking at you know downside moves here. So you know, yeah, even though the, the, the market has gone mostly up the strangle has still well, been we're at, we're at all time highs yeah sure it's gone mostly up right yes well <laughs> over this five-year period right mostly up 
Um, you know, overall, I think what this tells you is that you need to, you know, you can't just be on one side of the market. This is true. So last slide here. Um, in the long run, it generally does not pay to replace the call. Uh, so I scalped out of one of the micros there at 30. Nice. Um, yeah, so it got me a couple bucks back. Mm -hmm. uh, even with the same starting credit, short puts consistently show higher volatility, worse tail risk, and larger max loss than comparable strangles of the same initial premium. And we're just looking at the market as all SPY here. Um, that's our, our our study here. The market in market downturns, the difference becomes even more pronounced. Short puts can carry thirty to forty percent more volatility and worse tails than the strangles, the further out of the money strangles for the same amount of premium. So, from a risk perspective, the this kind of answers the question of like what's more risky. The 30 delta put or the 16 delta strangle. Most people think because you have the upside risk, the strangle is is more risky. It really is the downside uh, risk of just the put and not having that short delta that is the the higher risk here. So um, overall, you know, both have 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 worked over the last five years. But in terms of tail risk, you have a little bit more with just trading one side, which shouldn't be a shock to you.